One more time. J Cut Break Remix Freestyle. What? 1999! What's going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review and my own personal collection. The other day when I was browsing the interwebs looking for a device that someone asked me to do a review on, I came across this. I already heard about people talking about the SX-475 and that's kind of their new entry chip, so to speak, versus the 550. Now, those of you that know the 500 or 550, you're very aware of the joystick that I have on the G-Class. I didn't have the best time. I actually gave that a very, very low rating. Got a lot of flack for it, but I just didn't like the device. and People didn't like my opinion. So it is what it is. I saw this and I love high-end shit. Like, I really can't afford it anymore, but I still love it. I, I really do. We all know for the past year and some change, it's always been about DNA 75s and 60s, 75s, C. You don't really hear a lot about the SX chips. And that's not saying that they're bad chips. It's just very rarely will you see their chips. If you go back three years ago, SXs were everything that was in high end and you didn't really see too many DNAs. So the fact that I saw Varitube making a high end box mod, I had to get it. I saw this color, now granted, I don't wanna make it about this, but we all know that I'm colorblind. So when I saw this with all the different colors, I had to get it. I just think it's so friggin' gorgeous. I have never worked with the SX-475. It's a very, very new chip. Basically, it's like the Q-Mini 450J BT chip, just with a joystick instead of an up or down. This is resin. Resin and stab wood. That's typically what you see on high-end box mods, and I absolutely love the look of this. So what we're going to be talking about is the Renegade, which is made by Varitube, and this is the Mystic series, which is kind of like your high-end boxes. This mod was about 500 bucks, give or take. Normally, you don't hear me talk about prices of mods on a cheaper end of scale of things or even on high-end. What I'm gonna start doing for the really high-end of stuff, I just wanna put the price tag out there for you guys so you get the actual baseline of where we're at. This is about a $500 mod shipped to your door. So without further ado, let's flip it. You ever seen somebody smile like that? I think that's such an ugly smile. For me, I think of like an emoticon or an emoji when I think of smiling. I don't think of someone that has all their teeth showing. Let me, let me show you, because me saying that doesn't, I think of this. Right, that's what I think of. Or, and then a tear, a tear, a tear. I definitely can't do that one. The one where the eyebrows are pointy, like, uh, like peaks, like a mountain peak. Then you have people that smile like this. Why not? You look like you're gonna bite my fucking nose off my face. What are you, a velociraptor? Raptor. <laughs> related indirectly to the Raptor. Really nice display. The This is supposed to be on a little bit better, but the magnets are absolutely not the best, and you can tell up here that they did fall out, so it kind of sucks. Now, I did open this, I did use this. There's nothing else inside the box. Nice little suede look to it. I actually might use this box for like coils or something, because that is a really, nice interior and then more important than not it actually came with a 510 drip tip we know how much i love 510 drip tips this drip tip would have been much better if it was actually all resin and more of a wider bore they use kind of a center tube to put the resin around and i know you need something to form it but i have seen resin drip tips guys don't confuse resin with acrylic two totally different things for what you're spending the money on the mod you should get a little bit of a better drip tip. This is how the mod comes in a bag just like this. There is no extra peripherals. There is nothing. 
So let me show you what we are working with. This thing is absolutely stunning. Here is your wood finish. You can really see the lacquer there. Really, really shiny. Super pretty. There's your faceplate, which I believe is a, an aluminum. Feels like an aluminum on your top there. Renegade X RGX2. Here's the situation. When you're looking at this, the imperfections of these mods is what a lot of people that are in a high end strive for. For instance, I had a WAP wide booty. The thing with the WAP was there was actually pitting for the wood and that actually brought the value of the mod up and it feels really good in the hand. I know it looks a lot larger than what it is but it feels good. Those of you that are familiar with the 500 or 550, you're very much aware of the whole joystick. The funny thing is the joystick on this doesn't stick out half as much as what the G-Class does. On the top, Veritube and Fat Daddy have always been competing as far as 510 connections are concerned. Veritube is known to sell different parts where you can kind of make your own box. That is a 25 millimeter on there. There's something that's very, very noticeable on this. 510 is not actually straight. You see that? It's kind of at an angle. Holding it in your hand like this, you're not really going to notice it. But when you are looking at it in its full glory, you kind of do see it. And the reason why that is, when you look at the top, it kind of goes up at an angle. I would have much rather seen this more flat so the dripper or the tank sat flat on there. It is kind of a big deal to me. You know, now looking at it, it's... It kind of bothers me in a sense. You see when you screw it down, it's not perfectly straight at all. I mean, it's... It needs to go over more to the left. Hmm. Wow. You see that? Here, let me zoom out a little bit. You see? You see it? How it's going more to the left here. And then over here, it's going more to the right. Wow. I wouldn't even call that an imperfection. That's just a design flaw. Hmm. That's a letdown. And then you see here where your tube is and the resin kind of looks like it's encasing the actual tube. And that is where your battery is gonna go. These are the types of threadings that I absolutely despise. If you had the SX Mini ML class or the M, there was a gentleman that actually was a machinist and I believe a teacher that made additional battery caps. And what was cool with the battery caps, you were able to spin it with just your finger. You didn't need a coin or a certain type of tool to get it off. This is not specifically Veritube. This is all high-end mods. They use this ridiculous battery cap. I absolutely hate it. I think it's such a stupid battery cap. I hate anything threaded. You'll see that there are four ports, but you'll also notice right here, it almost looks like someone had used this prior and use the coin to unscrew that. Unless, of course, that comes from the factory like that, but I've never seen it where there's actually superficial flaws. Uh, clearly, that's not something that's gonna sit on a table and that's gonna get markings in it. It looks like it was used. And then inside the tube, super clean. You can see the wood there. It's nice, really nice. Then your battery, of course, is gonna go positive side in first. I almost want to try to see if an ML battery cap would work on this. Here we go. Flush. Five clicks to turn it on. 475J. Take a look at that USB down there. Do you see how it looks like it's all literally chewed up and bent? You see this? Now, I have never used this outside of this package. But take a look at that. It's actually bent. You see a lot of superficial scratches on here. I don't know if that is in fact the machining. It doesn't look the best. What we're looking at is a $500 mod. This is the faceplate. I want you to see something. This is the faceplate of a Think Vape Finder. For those of you that don't know Think Vape, this is... Look at this, watch. Watch when I move that, you see that? Less scratches and that's chrome. So why is it that I have something from China that is chrome that has less scratches on it from something from America that is handmade? Yeah, that's making me very fucking angry. Yeah, this is irritating me a lot. Looking at it out of the box looks fantastic. Once you get a little bit further in depth and you're really magnifying things under a camera, you really start to see a lot of flaws and this is very, 
very disturbing for me. Looking at this, it looks like it's kind of dirt underneath here, but that is the way that it is machined. And then you have your little rivets in the corner. Those of you that already know the SX series chip, you kind of know how the whole system works and how to navigate through the menu. What makes this chip more harder to navigate is there is no up and down. Let me explain why. Five clicks is going to put this into the menu option. Now, the only way to go through this is to actually press this down. And the issue you have is when you press this down, you may go left, right, up, or down, which is going to go to the next option. You have to actually press dead smack center of this, and it's very, very, very sensitive. So once you figure out what you want, you see what happens? It just goes right back. And it doesn't have as much options as the 450J does when you get into that menu. There's really not. There's exit, bypass, that's to act as a mech mod. System on or off. I don't even know why that's an option. System off should be an option because system on, you're not going to get into this with the system on. If we go to the power, you can press up or down to adjust it. Then if you press left or right, it's going to bring you back to the main menu. So in order to cycle through your actual way that it hits, you're just going to press up and that's going to cycle through. And then as you're in that menu, you could press down. No, you cannot. Wow. How about that? If you want to cycle through how hard this hits, you're going to press up and then cycle through. Now, previously in a 450J, you can actually press down and that will let you go through it. That's not the case at all. If you press down, it goes through the memory function. I'm just so very much used to as you're going through this, if you, let's just say you like standard, now I want it powerful. Instead of you going all the way through it again, you could press down. You can't do that anymore. Eco is eco-friendly for your battery. These are your coefficiencies. Powerful plus and then powerful. Wait a minute, I am so lost here. What do we got going on? How do you adjust the power? What you're gonna do is you're just gonna quick press that down. Now, once you press it down, it's gonna go into adjust and then you press up or down to adjust it. Left or right does absolutely nothing. Press it again, you're gonna be into jewels. So this is where temp mode is gonna come in. What I'm not a fan of is when you go to the option you want, like let's just say I'm trying to get to powerful. If I bypass powerful, I have to go all the way through the menu to the left again. You can actually can't use the right button to go back once you're cycling through it. So I wanna, let's just say I'm in SS2, I wanna go back to five. You can't press right. All you could do is press left again and go all the way through the menu. Depending on the memory block that you're in, it's gonna save that wattage once you hit the fire button. This drip dip is purple and clear. The only places you're gonna find purple on this whole mod is apparently, I guess, right here. I can't really see that. And then right here. If you're gonna use a 22 millimeter on here, the tank actually sits flush. That is a 22. However, when you use a 25 or 24 and it goes outside of the 510, it's going to touch this top piece and cause it to be a little unbalanced. So it's straight right now. Once we screw it down, watch what happens. Do we see it turning right now? Yeah, you can really see that. No, oh, that's bad. You see it? Ooh. That is rough. All right, so let's bring it on the top and go over the Renegade Mystic Series by Varitube 475J inside. Varitube Renegade Mystic Series SX475. And on the top there, we have the Typhoon GT3. We are working with 34.5 watts. Let me show you what I'm working with. The SX-475 has got a 92%, 92% efficiency rating. The DNA-75 has got an 85% efficiency rating. And that's the same thing with the DNA-75C and the DNA-60. Now the DNA-250 or the 167 you may know it as, or the DNA-200 or 133 respectively, a much higher efficiency rating. I believe it is 97 or 98%. It may be 95. Either way, it's a lot higher than that of the lower DNA series. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but 7% more vaping time 
is 7% more vaping time. This chip is very easy to navigate as far as going through the menu. But if we're talking about pressing the button down to get to the adjustments or to cycle through the menu, it's quite a pain in the ass. As far as once it's set and it's good to go, it's ready to rock. There's not a lot of settings on this like there is on the 450 jb tape i don't know why they came out with this chip i guess they wanted to make a newer age 450j but the 450j in my opinion was an amazing chip i don't know why we're going to change anything if we're changing it just for the joystick i think they should go back to the original one that's just i you know what it is i don't think on the 450j you can run it in a single battery that's why they went with this the chip is all right i mean it's to me it's nothing to write home about it's a decent chip i like sx chips i like dna chips i do prefer dna over that however one thing that's very important to note is this does have a seven percent higher efficiency rating than that of its equal counterparts of dnas this is where I'm very, very let down emotionally for the amount of money I spent on this. I don't feel like I got ripped off. I just don't feel as satisfied as I think I would have been if this wasn't in the condition it was in. The faceplate is really scratched up every which way you look at it. I understand the mod as far as the lacquer is concerned or, you know, you can't really play with the integrity of what you're putting on it. What you can do is send a better faceplate than that that is on there. It's a shame is when I have cheaper box mods that are $40, $50 and I have a better faceplate than this does on it. It's a $500 mod. What also bothers me is if you don't use a 22 millimeter on there like you see, the 510 is shit on this. It really makes me very upset. I'm so let down by this. I mean, it's a high-end mod, but it's manufactured with no care with no thought in mind just let's put this together and sell it for 500 bucks now i've spoke to the owner of veritube nothing but respect for him but if a product is shit a product is shit as good as this box looks that's about all it's good at is the box the chip is whatever it, to me that's not what's important what's important is how this is going to function so i'll never use this mod again it'll just go on the shelf behind me usually i don't use high-end mods anyway it's a shame for 500 bucks it really is if i was to rate this device on a zero to ten ten being the best thing that i've ever used and zero being the biggest piece of shit I would put this in a three or four block. It looks great. Aesthetically, it's there. It's solid. It's clean. But then you can't use certain tanks on the top because they're cockeyed. Even the one that's on there, the 22. Shorter ones you're going to get away with and you're not going to notice it as bad. That being jacked up, the USB being jacked up, the faceplate being jacked up. It's just an all-around negative experience that I've had with this. I really wish it was that much better. It's not totally wasted because it does look very appealing. It just doesn't work as good as it should for $500. I wish Veritu would have done a little bit more quality assurance and quality check on their devices because this looks like it was used. Even the battery cap on the bottom looks like there was a coin in it and it turned it. I expect something like this to come from China. I don't expect something that is going to be $500 American made to come in this type of fashion and this quality. I've kept it real. Have you? Jason.